Hey, hey, Push Run Nation, Dr. Dave here. Peace fresh off the streets from Pump It Out Nine Miles with the New Balance Super Comp Elite V3s. Did this on a training run a couple weeks ago. Ran in a 5K race wearing these and bettered my previous week's 5K time by 33 seconds. And that was the difference between wearing these on a similar style course than wearing the Nike Alpha Flies, if you can believe it. A subscriber said he wanted to get a review from me on the New Balance Super Comp Elite V3, so here we go. Okay, so New Balance is saying a U.S. men's size 9 is coming in at 7.9 ounces. I have a U.S. men's size 11 right here, so let's see where mine comes up in relation to the size 9, and I'm coming in at 8. 6 ounces, which is probably one of the lighter racing shoes that I have. And we'll put that over to Graham so our European subscribers and viewers will know what that comes to when we're coming in at 244 grams. Again, in a men's U.S. size 11, and we have U.K. 10.5, European 45. Okay, so those are the different sizes. The big bonus to this shoe is the fuel cell foam, which is the softest and most responsive foam This in this edition that New Balance has put out. And embedded in the middle of that is a Bode Energy Arc carbon plate, which really gives you a bouncy ride and a lot of snappiness in your stride when you're going along under race conditions. Now, one of the problems with wearing any carbon plated shoe in a training run, unless you're going at least at tempo pace, you may not be going fast enough to get the benefit of the carbon plate. So in that case, the shoe will feel pretty dead. It won't be as responsive as it should be because you're not going fast enough to get the full benefit and responsiveness from the foam and it working with the carbon and play. So you want to save a shoe like this for race conditions. Now the race that I wore this in was a moderately hilly course compared to other courses that I have run on the past few weeks. But in wearing the Nike Alpha Fly, it was a similar hilly course and temperatures outside. That's why I was able to balance the two shoes out under similar racing conditions, course, and temperature. Now let's check out some of the other new features. This is a totally redesigned shoe. Has very nice padding around the ankle. Nothing that really sticks out, so it's not really voluminous or rounded as some shoes have it. Does have a nice Achilles support here. Does have a semi-rigid plate in the heel cup. Has a nice pull tab here. The upper is a one-piece booty construction, meaning it does not have a separate tongue in the middle. So one of the drawbacks to having that booty upper is that when you cinch your laces down, this material right here is going to bunch up a little bit. So you'll, you will have to work with that a little bit underneath so when you get a proper lacing down, that material here on that tongue section is not causing irritation on the top of your foot. And mostly going into a race, you want to make sure you don't have a lot of irritation because you don't want to be in the middle of even a 5K race or half marathon marathon wearing this shoe and having irritation on the top of your foot that could result in blisters or abrasions, and then you're going to have burning. Uh, so you just want to kind of work with that a little bit. Make sure you wear the shoe a few times in training so you'll get a good idea of how you need to work with that lacing. The upper 
has between 30 and 40 percent recycled material, has a very nice lacing system. The laces are not stretchy. They're nylon in construction. The eyelet system on here is almost like a threaded eyelet. It does not have holes, but it has these little kind of ropey eyelets here all the way on both sides, inside and outside. It has very nice inlays here with the New Balance logo. Now that is also very stiff in construction, so that will add to your lateral support in hugging your foot in. The midsole is not designed in a way where any of that foam is above your foot, except in the arch here. And this does have a fairly medium to high arch. This is very form-fitting on the forefoot. If you need a shoe that really snugs your foot, this is it. If you have a wide foot, you want to check it with New Balance or wherever you buy your shoes, if you're interested in the New Balance Supercomp Elite V3, if you have a wide foot, you want to see if you can get it in a wider width because I have pretty thin feet, high arch, and this fits me perfectly. So again, on the midsole, we have the fuel cell phone with energy arc embedded right in the middle of all of that. On the bottom, we do have rubber sections on those areas where you'll be wearing down as far as your foot placement and your stride, whether you under or over pronate, where they have that rubber, which is a hardened rubber, you will be pretty good to go. Now, this does have a pretty good deviated sole here. One of the things you want to watch out if you're running on any type of gravel area or any debris on the course, rocks, stones, little sticks, they definitely can get stuck in here. Uh, I've had people watch my videos in the past where I've talked about deviated soles in the past and getting stones stuck in there and people making comments that, why do you even point that out? If you're in a race and you get a stone stuck in there that comes down farther than that sole, I know from personal experience that can result in twisting your ankle if you don't get that out of there immediately. And you'll know if something's in there by when you're striding along coming down if you're hearing a click, 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 click. If you do, stop, take that out. On the front of the carbon plate, which is a black spot right here, which goes pretty much the full length of the shoe, we do have that protection spot of hardened rubber up front here. Now, one thing I want to check is just to see what the durometer tells us here as far as softness in the forefoot and heel of the shoe. On the front forefoot, we have 21 to 23 in the heel. I have right around 18 in the heel, 16 to 18, forefoot again, 23. That tells you that you have, if you're a heel striker, you'll have a pretty soft landing coming down on your heel here. Usually, you have a little bit softer in the forefoot than you do on the heel, but on this shoe, it's the exact opposite. I'm almost a perfect neutral landing on my stride, and it's either neutral or a little bit on the forefoot, and I can tell you I get very good bounce back or responsiveness from this shoe. So that is the Supercomp Elite V3. If you're interested in checking this out further, some models and colors in this shoe you can pick up at a pretty good discount right now because they have new colors coming out for the New York City Marathon. The white version of this shoe you can pick up, I know, at Roadrunner Sports, and I'll link to it down in the description. You can pick it up now at a discount and possibly some of the other colors that have been selling online for a little while now. So this is Dr. Dave for Push the Run Nation. If you have any questions about this shoe or any other shoes out there, let me know down in the comments. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, 
please do so and put that down in the comments. I subscribed. If you have any questions about the running shoes you wear or would like to see me review any other shoes, pop them down in the comments too and I guarantee you I'll respond back to you. So, I'll see you out in the streets, roads, and trail. Peace.